Hi, everyone. Welcome back. A couple of things just to talk about today. Just a quick update, as usual, on the RV10. I don't remember where we left off last time, but I've got this uh, aft section of the sp uh, after the spar, which is some of the baggage compartment, rear seats. That's all riveted together. I think we had it standing upright last time, and told you Carol was helping me rivet that. So we did get that finished. I managed to get the uh, front section done here. And I got all the parts now for Chapter 28 primed, and we'll get started on those either today or tomorrow. So that's not the gist of the update today. A couple of things. Uh, we've been asked by many of you, how do we go from this, meaning all of these pieces, to this? Basically a completed airplane. So, uh, and by the way, on this airplane, you'll notice today is a box. Those are all the Alaska books. I'm taking them to Spruce this morning. So you'll be able to order those. They should be in stock within the next day or so at Spruce. So that's the Alaska book. So pretty excited about that. But back to the main topic is how do we get to this? And it, they were really DAR questions and I printed some of them off so I remember. But basically the gist of it is one of the things you wanna make certain of is when you're building your aircraft, take pictures, make entries in the logbook. You can use the kit log that EAA has if you want that's online. You can be as simple as just do what I do. You have the instructions from Vans and I'll write down each day at the end of the day, the date and the time that was spent. So, you know, 219, four hours and I check all the things that were done. And we've got pictures and we've got video. Basically, you want to be able to prove that 51% of the aircraft was built by amateurs. Now, some of you have asked, what does that really mean? What it means is 100 people can build this airplane. Matter of fact, you look across the country and you'll see things like team builds on RB12s. Only one person goes down as the builder. And by the way, that can't be an LLC anymore. It needs to be a person. So the FAA changed that. But, uh, and only one person will get a repairman certificate. So along that journey, what are some of the things you want to make certain that you've done? First off, if you buy a kit from, let's talk about Vans Aircraft, you'll end up getting a bill of sale for that when you buy the finished kit. You want to hang on to that bill of sale. If you're buying a, you know, partially finished kit or an unopened kit, like I did here from a prior builder or purchaser from Vans, you want to make certain you get a good bill of sale from that person and you get the bill of sale that they have from Vans as well if they have it, if they had all the kits. If they don't have all the kits, you want to notify the kit manufacturer right away that you're the new owner and get on their list such that when you get the final kit, typically they will give you a bill of sale. The FAA, when you go to register your aircraft, wants to see a trail of the bill of sale all the way from the time it left the kit manufacturing facility until the day that it's actually applied for registration. So in some cases, you may have multiple bills of sale. There's a lot of kits out there that actually go between multiple builders across many years. It's really important to have that trail. If you don't have that paper trail and it's been across multiple builders, you might want to figure out what you're going to do first before you buy it. You could end up with a yard ornament especially if there's not documentation that it was built by amateurs, okay? So that's that part. And somebody asked, so how do I prove it's 51% built by me? I think I covered that. Just, you know, keep a log, use pictures. Do you need to contact the DAR as soon as you get started? No, okay? The reality is you can call the DAR when you're finished. Um, I get a lot of those. Uh, is that mm, the absolute right thing to do? It's not a problem. Uh, but you might want to give the DAR some heads up. Do you need to call FISDO? No. Okay. Uh, FISDO will come out and inspect an airplane sometimes. They really do like to hand that off to the DARs. But if you're willing to wait, sometimes the FISDO guys will come out and do an inspection. I know the Atlanta Mido, I've been training those guys, so some of them actually now know how to come out and inspect amateur-built aircraft. So you have to have it registered before you can go ahead and apply for an airworthiness certificate. And the way you do that today is the FAA has a website called the Airworthiness Center or AWC. So you just Google that, you'll find it online and you have to get on there, create an account and, and go through a whole bunch of things. It actually electronically creates the 8130-6 form 
which is an application for airworthiness certificate. One of the things I'd recommend everybody do is get the EAA packet, how to license and register your home built. It will walk you through all of these steps. What you do want to do if you're going to use a DAR is call the DAR right before you do your application so he or she can give you any tidbits on their name to put in, their number to put in, so it gets routed properly. As an example, I work for the Atlanta Mido, not the Atlanta FISDO. So if you, if you don't route it properly, it ends up going to the Atlanta FISDO, and then we got to figure out how to change the routing in the system so it gets to me. I'm sure I'm not the only DAR in that position across the country. So do go have some conversations with your DAR ahead of time. Uh, let me see if I covered all the questions. Tech counselors, yes. Okay, somebody asked, uh, hey, do I need to use tech counselors? Reality is no. Should you? Yes. Okay. Uh, matter of fact, the only three denials I've ever issued, tech counselors were not involved and could have prevented some of the problems. So uh, they're easy to find today. And, uh, you know, if you can't find one locally that uh, understands your aircraft, look on the EAA website for the list of tech counselors. Today, with iPhones and Android phones and FaceTime, we can do a lot of consultations remotely. And, you know, the phone's 4K anymore. We can see the details. So don't, don't not do anything just because somebody isn't local. If you've got a question, uh, find somebody who understands your aircraft and figure out a way to get in touch with them. Okay. Um, I think that's most of the questions that everybody's asked. I think I've covered it. Uh, don't hesitate if you have any more questions, you know, put them there on the YouTube and I'll try and respond to them. But uh, it should be an easy process getting it done if you, you know, kind of work through it as you go along. And uh, it should be a happy day. Don't sweat the inspection, okay? Get everything lined up, have all your paperwork, use the tech counselors or somebody who understands whatever kind of medium that you're working on with your aircraft. Sometimes there's just local A&Ps that can help you with tube and fabric fiberglass work or sheet metal work. They may not necessarily be tech counselors, but they've got a lot of experience. I would encourage you to take advantage of that, especially those of you who are first time builders. Okay, thanks for listening. Good luck with your projects and we'll keep you updated on ours.